Have you ever wondered why certain nations remain underdeveloped or developing? It's an unsettling question that opens up a complex web of issues. It's not just a matter of economics or resources. It's a tangled interplay of history, politics, culture, and a host of other factors. This is not a simple puzzle to solve. It's a multifaceted problem that has been the source of debate and discussion for decades. It's a question that's puzzled economists, historians, and policymakers alike. Historical events have left an indelible mark on the development trajectory of nations. To understand this, let's travel back in time to an era when the world was carved up by the colonial powers. These powers, in their quest for wealth and power, exploited the lands they colonized. They stripped these nations of their resources, disrupted their traditional economies, and imposed foreign systems of governance. This colonial legacy has had far-reaching effects, stunting economic growth and leaving a trail of underdevelopment in its wake. Consider the African continent, where the scars of colonization are still evident. The arbitrary borders drawn by colonial powers often disregarded ethnic and cultural divisions, leading to conflicts that persist to this day. These conflicts have had devastating effects on infrastructure, making it difficult for these nations to build strong economies. Similarly, wars, both internal and external, have played a significant role in stunting the development of nations. The physical devastation caused by wars is evident, but the impacts go much deeper. Wars disrupt education systems, leading to a lack of skilled workforce, which in turn hampers economic growth. They also lead to political instability, which discourages investment, further impeding economic development. Political instability, whether caused by wars or other factors, has also been a major hurdle in the path of development. Unstable governments often fail to implement long-term development plans. The uncertainty also deters both domestic and foreign investors, slowing down economic growth. These historical events have not just affected the economies of these nations, they have also had long-lasting impacts on their education systems and infrastructure. Underdeveloped education systems mean that these nations struggle to build a skilled workforce, which is crucial for economic development. Similarly, inadequate infrastructure makes it difficult for these nations to attract investment and engage in trade. In conclusion, the path to development is not just about the present or the future, it's also about the past. The shadows of history continue to impact the present, inhibiting progress in many parts of the world. But history is not the only culprit. Present challenges also play a significant role. In today's world, corruption is a pervasive issue that continues to plague developing and underdeveloped nations. It's like a termite that gnaws at the foundation of progress, often leading to the misappropriation of resources that could otherwise be used for development and progress. Poor governance is another significant challenge. It often hampers the implementation of policies aimed at promoting economic development and social justice. Inefficient leadership and lack of political will can lead to stagnation, preventing these nations from moving forward on the path to progress. Lack of education is yet another hurdle. Without access to quality education, the future generations are left ill-prepared to contribute meaningfully to their societies. It's like trying to run a marathon with one's feet tied together. It just doesn't work. Inadequate infrastructure, from roads and bridges to hospitals and schools, further complicates the matter. It's a bit like trying to build a house on a shaky foundation. It's bound to collapse sooner or later. This combination of corruption, poor governance, lack of education, and inadequate infrastructure presents a formidable challenge. It's a bit like trying to climb a mountain with a heavy backpack. Every step becomes a struggle. These challenges, both historic and current, have created a vicious cycle of underdevelopment that's tough to break. So, what does the future hold for these nations? The future, filled with possibilities, is in their hands. But it's not solely up to them, it's about good governance, establishing systems that promote transparency, accountability, and participation. 
It's about decision makers, prioritizing investments in education, nurturing the minds that will shape tomorrow. It's about building robust infrastructure to support growth and development, to connect people, ideas, and opportunities. But this is not just their battle to fight. It's a global responsibility. Developed nations have a role to play, a responsibility to extend a hand in partnership. International cooperation is pivotal, sharing knowledge, resources, and expertise. It's about recognizing that we're all interconnected in this global village. The path to progress may be steep, fraught with challenges, but it's not insurmountable. It's a complex issue with no easy solutions, but with concerted effort, progress is possible. The future can indeed decide justice.